Santo, Santo é o Senhor dos Exércitos. Holy is the name of the hosts. The presence of the Lord is, is, it does good for our soul and our minds and hearts. And we are here in His presence, delighting in Him. Agree the church and the ones who follow us through the media with the peace of the Lord Jesus. I invite everyone to open their Bibles in the Gospel of John. Gospel of John, chapter 19. John 19. John 19. We're going to read only verses 26 and 27. John 19, verses 26 and 27. Yeah, does the word of the Lord tell us? When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing by, he said to him, his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her to his own home. Let us close our eyes. Lord, our beloved Father, we praise you for what you have already done from the beginning of the service, through the prayers, through the praises. The manifestation of the Lord has been abundant in our midst. We have experienced great things in our presence. Lord, we ask, Lord, that after reading your word, the reading has already does, done good to our soul, but we ask that you continue to speak to us, revealing what we need to understand in order to serve you better and to be prepared to live eternally with you. We pray to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. If the brethren have noticed, in the last few days, we have experienced a moment, spiritually speaking, in which the spirit of the mistake, a consortium of evil that uh, plagues the world, involves the enemy of our souls, the world on itself and the and the greed, they have worked in order to devalue the world, the role of the church. I've just read a text here that prophetically speaks about the relationship that Jesus wished between His Church and His Holy Spirit, our life, and the care with the one that is coming near, the ones who are coming near, and the world is trying to teach us exactly the opposite, especially during the pandemic. We have observed that uh, an availability of many churches of being open and the activities being always online. I've seen here a great fall on the faith of many. Many would come to you know, go to church only on special events. Some would go only to weddings, children uh, presentations, service at the end of the year, uh, supper of the Lord, seminars, and would very rarely would go and then they no longer desire to be in, present in the church. And this was an attack of the enemy to cause this, uh, uh, the church to grow colder and this distancing of man, a servant of God, from one another, and consequently losing fellowship with the Holy Spirit of God. And the ones who prayed, that paid a price, the ones who cried at God's feet, they were able to be victorious. And that's what the word says. Be faithful to the end and I'll give you the crown of life. Be faithful until you die. And you, I will give you the victory, the crown of life. And to be sitting at, with me to eat of the fruit of life, the promises are many. But it's not enough to be faithful only to 2020, 21, 2023. No, I'm going to be faithful only to 2025. No. We have to be faithful to the end, to death. And we know that a few will not be able to see the rapture. But the desire of the Lord is that even the ones who are harvested earlier, that they may remain faithful in fellowship, water on the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, 
and do from heaven, so whatever happens, they may remain st steady and constant. Jesus was already hung on the wood, and he looks, and then he presents his mother to the Apostle John, and Apostle John, and to Apostle John, his mother, sh telling him the care that he needed to have. And in the times of Jews, uh, the, the, Jesus in the Old Testament, a woman depended completely on her husband, and especially on her children. And if she lost her husband, she would be a woman that would be uh, living in, in shame, sadness, and pain. And if she lost her male children that obviously sustained her, this will mean this will be a woman that would be would be completely desolated. And Jesus telling uh, prophetically that his church was not going to be uh, neglected. Uh, I'm going to send my Holy Spirit, my the Counselor. So at the moment, the Gospel of John, it represents the Holy Doctrine. We see the letters of John, like the letters of Paul and Peter and so many other writings that were left to us. All the teachings necessary so that we remain standing. And tonight, you are in the house of the Mother. The Mother is present. The Church is present. And the Church has invited you. Somebody from the Church invited you. Maybe you have thought, oh, I'll go there to please her or to to please the one who invited me. But in fact, the Holy Spirit was the one who used that person, this representative of the church, to bring you here so that you would be here drinking of the water of life, so that you would be feeding of on the green pastures. You are here for purpose, and the purpose of the Lord is to bring you closer. And you've seen the end of the verse, then he said, and from that hour, that disciple took her to his own home. So I was willing to receive the Holy Spirit in your home, uh, the fellowship and assistance. That that's what has held us held us here. When we participate in a group of assistance, is the word that we hear always. And uh, what the apostle said, Apostle Paul said, I never try to say those things because they are life to you. We try to emphasize and rem remind the brethren. Have you seen someone from the church? A different face, somebody that you may have never seen before. Don't let this person raise his hand. Go to that person with a smile of a redeeming soul, redeemed soul, and say, "Peace of the Lord," and say, "You are very welcome." If you want, we can pray with you and clarify any doubt. Last week we have a wonderful experience here in the Church of Pompano. When it was a Sunday night, there was a young woman sitting on the chair there near the bathroom and and the ushers here in front we finished the service and that person like the pastor said now we're going to be available to give assistance if you need an assistant raise your hand remain where you are or ask someone to raise their hand and nobody had risen their hand and we went towards someone that was there that we thought through the Holy Spirit that that person needed an assistance. But on the middle of the way, a servant that was there near the granite, near the sound, quickly went towards a, a person, another youth, a youth that was visiting for the first time. And this youth was em emphatic. Afterwards, he said, I never saw this person, but Holy Spirit told me to ask this person for a prayer, and I noticed that this person bowed very, s very gently, saying, "No, I'm saying no. I, I don't want it because." But she was very shy. But she said, "If you, if you want, you can remain where you are, and we're going to call someone to pray for you." And then we went there and began to talk, and she began to cry out of, out of a sudden, and we asked her, "Are you visiting us for the first time? Do you need someone?" Do you know someone? Oh, I know the people on the bench there. And she pointed out to the fa her family members and she said, they don't know that I'm here. I came here to make a surprise to them. But I would like to remain here. Uh, she was so shy. But I said, so I said, no problem. You remain where you are comfortably. If you want, we can bring you to go to there and help you to make this surprise. And then they will be very happy with their presence here. And we're going to pray there together with them. My brother, I have no idea how how happy that moment was when they came 
to the other on the bench and the family members saw her and they brought embraced her and brought her closer and we prayed and the person that approached her was extremely edified and she received a blessing from the Lord the Lord spoke to her heart and she she cried bitterly and she said that she felt the the love of the Holy Spirit that brought her here she was not even invited can you imagine my brain the operation of wonder the Lord they are infinite and they had invited her on other occasions, but on that day, she had not been invited by them, but she was being invited by the Holy Spirit himself. And there she received her blessing, blessing in the name of the Lord. And she felt the love of the, the mother, the church as a mother. And she understood that she needed to be in this house, inhabited in this house. And the Lord Jesus there on the cross delivers his soul resurrects on the third day and begins to present himself and one day he presents into a house cl door closed and window closed and he enters in spirit and he presents himself and say peace be with you and he invite everyone to have this moment of fellowship and then he begins to present himself in several occasions and at the end of the book of john if the brethren still have their your bibles open you will find out that on the last chapter, it speaks of a moment when a few days have already passed, that Jesus had, had already died, and the Lord Jesus had presented them as he had said, but they chose to go back to their old life on chapter 21 of the book of John. Verse 3 says the following. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We are going with you also. They went out and immediately got into the boat. And that night they caught nothing. And here it has a meaning of the prophetic, a prophetic meaning. When they have been called by the Lord Jesus through his ministry, they were called in the moment where, where they were fishing. It was their profession. And Jesus called them and said, I will make you fisher of men. And and from that moment forward, they let go of their fishing nets and followed Jesus. So prophetically, there was a change. Before they they fished, they were fish fishermen, but now they began to evangelize and proclaim the gospel. The, the word gospel, gospel means about good news. And what was the good news? Jesus arrived. The Messiah arrived. He is among us. He is healing. He is saving. He is resurrecting. He is among us. Amongst us, and he will die, but he will resurrect, and he will send his spirit. And those are the news. And so those men they learned about this. But when Jesus dies, and the time passes, they have grown weaker in their faith, and they lost what the. Bible says in Revelations that first love, the first love is when the beginning of a relationship where everything is, is a celebration, uh, where in the science they even say like they, their fate, their eyes goes uh, blurry. They see nothing else but that person. But th so the Lord called us, invited us, He loved us. We delighted with His love, and that's the moment. That's the moment in which we come to His presence. But as time passes by, if there's no maintenance, this love may grow colder. And that's what we see in the end of the book of John, this love being growing colder. They have forgotten of the promises. They forgot of the miracles. And they begin to say, let's go back to our old life. And we see in the, throughout this passage several characteristics of the one that had not given maintenance to His the spiritual life and the bible says that was very common the fishermen when they went to high sea they would be only amongst them and they even would take off their clothing but jesus comes to them after they have not caught anything then jesus asks do you have anything to eat and they answered we have nothing we fished all night and we were not able to catch anything so then i would like to make an observation here at this moment here when we forget the first love, when we forget to give maintenance, maintenance on our spiritual walk, when we do not give worth to the presence of the Holy Spirit, we do not give worth to this, which is the body, which, which is the mother that takes care of our children, we catch nothing. There is no victory. There is no fruit. 
there is no uh, success. So the expression was emphatic. Do you have anything to eat? And the, the answer was simply no. And Jesus gave an order. The order of Jesus was throw the net to the right side. And prophetically speaking, the right side is where Jesus is sitting there on eternity. So every time that Jesus gives this instruction, we understand that there is a mystery related to the eternity, where we're going to. We're going to be with the Lord. And what says in Revelation that we will sit at the Lord to judge the nations. That's very deep. So the, the right side speaks about the relationship with the eternity. And they obeyed and did not question, even though in their hearts may have thought, we understand of fishing, we fish all night, we can catch anything, but the, if the Lord is asking, we're going to follow your order. And the Bible said that was uh, the, this, this time they caught a lot of fish. And when they come to the, to the shore with so, many, so much fish, there was already on the shore something already prepared for them. When they saw them, he said, bring the fish that you brought, that you catched. And then they brought, but then we, they saw a live coal and fish on the, the coal and bread. So we see clearly here the presence of the Trinity, Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, being at our own disposal for the return to fellowship. If they were there outside of the position, going back to their old life, uh, naked, but when John is, tells Peter, Peter, this man is Jesus, because they were not in fellowship. They did not recognize. Uh, that's what the word said. But at that moment, John he was called the apostle of love, the love of one, the disciple that was loved, not because it was better, but because he gave greater worth than the others. He demonstrated his closeness. He was always close to Jesus. The last harper, he was he had his dad leaning against Jesus' uh, chest, and prophetically speaking. It's, it was said because he had his head on Jesus' chest. He heard the uh, heartbeat of Jesus. That's why he receives the revelations of the book of Revelations. So if you and I uh, learn to rest our head on Jesus' heart, we're going to hear the answers that he has, that, that we need. And in intimacy, he's going to reveal to to you the plan that he has for my life and to your life. And uh, now I'm going to direct to the youth here tonight as we finish the month of to the youth. You, the youth, have many plans and many desires, and you're having intentions. And with your intention, you want to think, oh, uh, uh, where they are. So the, believe. Lean your head against the chest of Jesus. Hear Jesus' heartbeat and your sentimental life, uh, uh, your academic life, what you need to do, uh, to how far you want to go. Ask the direction God is going to give in your professional life after finishing your academic life. God will going to open doors. Where there are no doors, He's going to open up way where there is no way. And He always has. He always has, my brethren, the best for His children. But when John tells Peter, Peter is the Lord. So then Peter dresses up and then goes to the water to meet with the Lord. So he was reminded of everything that he knew. And he said, I need to go back. I need to love. I need to give worth. Everything that one day I learned. And my brother, we are studying throughout these many weeks, four months, in the book of Revelations of uh, the Song of Solomon. And there's a verse that says in the Song of Solomon 1-4, Take me and we're going to run after you. The, the king introduced me to these chambers, and him will rejoice and rejoice of his love. And remember, more than the wine, the righteous love you. And the Lord has brought you here to give worth to this work and the, to give worth to a kingdom who is perfect. Man is imperfect, imperfect. Maybe you might think, oh, I don't agree with this or that. Do not be concerned. Be concerned what the Holy Spirit is speaking to the church, the ones who can have an ear, listen to what the Spirit is saying to the church. The righteous, the righteous walk on the light and rejoice in you. When we're seeking the will of the Lord, and the will of the Lord is that we are here introducing the, the chambers of the Lord, intimacy with the Lord. And tonight, the Lord has given many spiritual gifts we are going to share with you after we sing a song where the Lord is calling you to intimacy. And the Lord is saying to you, 
outside there is nothing. There is hunger, there is sadness, there is spiritual coldness running th through this world. But in the church, in the chamber of the one who has loved us, close to the house where is our mother, the church, the church is praying for you. Never forget this. If you are going through a trial, the church is going to hold you by your hand and is going to take to the Lord and say, Lord, heal, baptize, deliver, open door of a new job. And tonight the Lord wants to give you an understanding of the worth of this wonderful church. A church where one we pray for one another in the moment of the sadness we pray we cry with one another. When but when the victory comes we rejoice with one another. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let us close our eyes and let the Lord visit our hearts. Glory to God. What a gift that the Lord has shown to us tonight was a dream on which uh, a mother was handed down a, a house in, as an inheritance to her daughter. And the house of the, the daughter was very disorganized. There was a need to uh, make a couple of adjustments and uh, rep repairs, and the house could not be inhabited. But the house that the mother handed down was a perfect house, and she gave the key, and she said, do not lose the key, and the house is this kingdom of the Lord. And the, Holy, the, king, the work of the Holy Spirit is perfect. Our life may be disorganized, but if we accept this invitation of the Holy Spirit and allow Him to govern our life, everything will be in order. The hydraulic, the electrical part, the part of organization, the construction structure, the protection, everything will be in order. But the key cannot be lost if you, because if you lose the key of your house, you have problems. You need to, uh, you need to call a key maker. If you, the key maker is, does not arrive, you're going to be locked outside. And the, Lord, the Holy Spirit is giving you the key. The key is a secret tonight. And if we, uh, the key maker, some, when he's making a key, is, is redoing the, the secret on the key. 
So, so remain with the Lord, never give up, never look behind because inheritance is worth it. It's eternal life. And this house that we are already living, but we'll be living much better in eternity with the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord also has shown in a spiritual, another spiritual gift, a woman that was coming, and she came with her a handkerchief where she was cried with for many years, and the Lord was asking for this handkerchief. Give me your handkerchief. And she was reluctant for a while, but then she handed down the handkerchief. And the Lord would take this handkerchief from her. And she he would say, was pleasing to my spirit to dry out your tears. The answer to your need was delivered from the eternity tonight. Take possession of a blessing. You who have been crying and keeping this handkerchief, you begin to get used to this pain and this sadness. Don't do this. The Lord is giving you comfort with this word and with this promise. The Lord is giving you the victory. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord also has shown a man that came here tonight as a miracle. Because when it was near to the, our, the service, he began to say, I have so many chores, so many things I need to do that I'm finished. But the Lord has provided so that even though he, could, he had so many chores, he would come do, because the Lord is going to take care of these chores. We need to do our chores, but the Lord takes care of them as well. Uh, w for as long as we take care of taking care of the things of the Lord, He takes care of our things. Blessed be the Lord. But there is another gift. There is related to another woman that she has living has been living off of memories from the past, and her pa her past is related to um, a river with crystal waters, crystal clear waters. But she was not enjoying this at the moment. But the Lord was showing that doing this service uh, to live in this river, but not living off of memories. You have already had many experiences with the Lord. You know, you who, who are hearing this gift, you may may say, Lord, may I not live off of memories, but give me new experience uh, and so I can drink of this water so that I, I might be purified in life of sanctification in the presence of the Lord. Blessed be the Lord. The Lord also has shown that during this service, the presence of the Lord was being poured out through like a petals of, of roses. The Lord is present, my brother and sister. Do not lose your, miss your blessing. Do not leave this place without receiving the experience of the Lord. It is an angel of the Lord that comes to say to a servant that feels that she is unworthy but he, the Lord is saying, I change your mind. I transform your thoughts. Do not look behind. Do not remember the mis your mistakes. Then consider your, your sins because they have already been forgiven. I no longer remember your sins. Let's be the Lord. Lord to Jesus. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. My brother and sister, you who visit us tonight know that the church is a project of God for the eternity. In every biblical moment, we see a group of people, even in the moment of the deluge, 
The ark was at the disposal to all men wanted, but at the end, only eight people were, were inside, and those eight people had to go to this moment in this flood. And I now ask you, do you think that they, they identified with one another, that they related very well, maybe uh, that was everything in peace? Maybe not. Maybe you see defects on the church, but the church is part of the teaching of the Lord to teach us that we may love even the ones who are bores. It's a teaching from the Lord. We need to love. And the teaching of the Lord is the opposite. Serve the Lord in your house with your computer or cell phone. Follow whatever is being served. And you can eat any food you want. No. There is only one food that sustains our spiritual life. The living bread of God, which is Jesus revealed. Live this. Live this experience. Remember the text that we have read. Woman, here is your son and here is your mother. And from that day forward, he received her in his house. Receive Jesus in his house, in your house. Live with this church that has been a mother for us. How many experiences we have experienced here? We had here from the moment this church was opened. How many wonderful experiences? How many were were able to learn to love even the ones who are bored them? We know that we are much closer to live with the Lord in the glory. And this cares of the Holy Spirit pouring out His dew upon us and rain of blessings upon us, opening doors so that we may be able to inherit, inherit their heavenly dwellings, Lord. We're going to avoid the glorification for this work, this everything that is our vineyard, is that will guide us to this place and they're going to bring us to eternity. Bless be in the Lord. Lord, we praise the Lord. Because we know that the joy of the Lord is our strength that elevate us before. We know that we don't know where to go because only you have words of eternal life. We praise the Lord for your love, for your grace, for saving grace, for the death of your son Jesus on the cross. We know, Lord, that we are weak and sinners, but you have poured out your, the blood of Jesus on behalf of our lives. We praise the Lord because it's pleasing to you to visit our hearts tonight. Because you know the presence of the Lord is real in our midst. Lord, we praise and glorify you because soon Maranatha will be fulfilled. We praise the Lord. Praise you because this is a night of salvation. We glorify the Lord in the name of Jesus. Amen. Receive our service, Lord, and take us home in peace and security. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. You visit us. You are very welcome in the name of Jesus. We want to go to you to pray with you and speak with you. Say where you are and tell us in what moment of the service the Lord spoke to your heart. And now we're going to be available. Give a sign or ask someone to give you a sign and the ushers and deacons and pastor. We're going to be at your disposal to love you in Jesus with a friendly love, a brotherly love.